Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. This video is actually a response to a question I got in Discord. Um, the question itself is not too difficult, but I thought that if I make the response into a video, I can send that as a reply. Um, but also, if I make it a bit more universal, um, anybody can benefit from it really. It's quite useful. I feel like it would be a video that people might want to see. Um, and well, effectively, what the video is about is how do you change the UI based on what input method you're using? So whether that's going to be, am I using a mouse and keyboard or have I connected a controller and I want to see uh, instructions on how to use controller. So a quick demonstration of that would be if I was to press play here, you can see that by default, my keyboard and mouse bindings are set up. So it's saying press space to jump. So if I press space, as you'd expect, I jump. Now, if I grab my controller, which I've connected to the computer, in my case, I'm using a PlayStation controller. If I then move the uh, mouse sticks, because by default, um, Unreal's templates have game controller support already built into them. But if I press the um, analog stick just to move my character, you'll see now that my space to jump has now changed to X. Because on a PlayStation control, the jump button's actually the X key. So now if I press the X key, you can see that I'm going to jump. Now, if I was to now grab my keyboard and run forward with my keyboard, you can now see that that message has changed back to space. So this is this is changing on the fly, depending on the input that I'm, I'm actually using, rather than having to go to the menu, tell it that I'm using a controller now and, and, and the UI update afterwards. So how to do this is pretty simple. There's only two things that I'm going to say you need. Um, I've set this up in the player controller for the, for the most part. And then you need your, your HUD widget, which is going to hold your text on the screen, uh, which I think should be quite obvious. Um, so what I've done is, I tell you what, we'll explore the HUD object first. So for mine, it's very primitive. All I've got is a canvas panel and the actual text block itself on the screen. And what you want to do is you want to... Um, you want to set up a key, but not a key binding. You want to set up a binding on the actual text itself. So you can see I've got one of them here already, but if I just remove that for a second, you should see something like this where it allows you to change the text that's within it. But there's also a bind button. So when you press that and create click, sorry, if you click on create binding, you will get what's called a function. Now, because I've already pressed this, I've already got the function set up. So I'll just select that. But what that'll do is when you've created it, it'll jump you over to the graph and it'll put you inside of a, um, a function like this. Now, obviously, yours won't have this bit. You'll just be granted with these two boxes. But this is all we need to get this to work. Um, visually, that is. Sorry, that visually. Um, so what we've got here, let me just talk you through it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll remake this because it's quite simple, but we actually work backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a string append. And then I'm just going to type in a little message. So press. And then I'm going to open a pair of quotes just because that's the visual style I want to go for. I'm going to need to leave this box blank because that's how I'm going to add my keyword, whether it's space or X to jump. I'm going to add a pin and then I'm going to follow this up but start this sorry with a double quote and then I'm going to put to jump so now I need to do is I need to get the key for this one what I'm going to do for that one is I'm going to use a select um, node so we're going to pick select and the return value at the moment the gray because the, the what called a wild card it doesn't know what it needs to return just yet but if you select the return value and plug that into a string, it'll now know, right, I'm going to be returning some kind of string. So it's automatically assigned these other two to strings now. So what we can do is, as a default, I'm going to put space for my keyboard. And for my second option, or option one in this case, I'm just going to put X, which is the um, jump key on my PlayStation control. Now, we need to be able to pick between these two options. So what we can do is we can say, I actually want to pick based off a Boolean. So you can see now, if my Boolean ends up being true, we're going to see X. And if it's going to be false, we're going to see space. So let's plug that return value into this return value. And you can see that this is a string and this slightly lighter pink is a text. But if you drag it, it will do the conversion for you. So that's fine. 
All we need now is we need some form of boolean to decide whether this is true or false. So what you can do in your variables within your HUD is just add a variable. Um, it's going to be a type of boolean, so pick boolean. I've called mine gamepad enabled, and then we'll just drag that onto this index. So based on whether this boolean is now true or false is going to depend on what's going to be displayed on the screen. So I'm going to hit compile. And then now all I need to do is go over to my game, con uh, sorry, my player controller and just update that based on whether a key's been pressed on the keypad. So over to the player controller and I'll just talk you through this bit now. So you might be familiar if you've done worked with HUDs before. On the event begin play, I'm going to create my HUD widget, the thing that's going to be displayed on the screen. Before I display it on the screen, I'm just going to save it as a variable. So what you can do is from your return type, promote a variable. That'll give you this, um, this set node here. And then from the set node, I'm just adding that to the screen or viewport in this instance. What we can do now is because we're in the player controller, the player controller can listen out for any inputs whatsoever. So what we can do is we can use this any key um, event node. And effectively, it doesn't matter what key you press on any input device, as long as Unreal can understand it, it will be received by this any key um, node. Now, the benefit is you can see there's this um, output on this node, which is called key structure. And there's a lot of information behind this. And one of them we can use to get this Boolean. Is this a gamepad key? Is this key a part of the gamepad schema? Um, and if it is, let's do something about it, which is perfect for us because we can say when any key is pressed, check if that key was a part of a gamepad. Run that into a branch. If that happens to be true, let's access our HUD and find this gamepad enable boolean and let's set it to true. If this is not true, if it's not a gamepad key, then we must be using something else or the mouse and keyboard, set it to false. And then because of this select node that we've created on the HUD, this now updates um, accordingly and updates the screen. So with that being said, so just in case um, you're not sure from your HUD, which is this one here that you set earlier on, you can type in gamepad and you can set your gamepad enabled. enabled. One thing to note, um, if you can't see this set node, there is a chance that you'll have to come back to your gamepad within your HUD and just tick instance editable and expose on spawn. Um, and then you should be able to find this. And then once you've done that, effectively, if you're running around with your mouse and keyboard and then you decide, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch to my uh, controller now. Your UI should update with that. So... I know I've made that a little bit longer than it needs to be for what we've done. I just thought I'd make this a bit more universal for anybody to watch over the years to come. Um, Jays from Discord, I hope that answers your question. And I look forward to more of your questions. So for now, that's it for me. So I'll speak to you in another video. Cheers.